Actually, our last trip of the year, we're going to finish the year here and start the year here. <laughs> and we've actually cozied ourselves up here in our Airbnb. Um, you can probably see over Rob's shoulder over there, the wreath on the door. I bought that at the store the other day. You can't see them because they're off for right now because they flicker too much. But I put lights on this little decorative plant behind me and you can see the Christmas that's our Christmas tree there. <laughs> it's about this big. It was only $2 though. <laughs> Hello, Brown Eyed Girl. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Welcome. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about today. Lots to talk about. Uh, we are going to be talking about Airbnbs, hotels, accommodations, when you should be using them, and we probably do have to explain why we're in an Airbnb right now. <laughs> uh, welcome, retired 2019 Kathy and Robert. Great to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, great to have everybody here. This is going to be great. We're going to just talk. You can ask questions about anything in here. Also, uh, finances. Yeah, you don't have to stay on topic as long as it falls under what we normally talk investments, about. Investments, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... We're going to talk about Airbnb though because we did just put out a video a few weeks ago about why we were not going to be doing Airbnb anymore uh, and now we're in an Airbnb so we're going to tell you why that is <laughs> and it's because we've had this Airbnb in Thailand booked for over a year. As a matter uh, of fact, about a, about we, a year. yeah, we booked it about a year ago right now when we were in Edmonton, Canada. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we were in Edmonton and we found this place where like we've got to stay there. Yeah, uh, right. And, and, and if you haven't, and if you haven't seen the video tour of this apartment, um, it is in the link in the description below, and you will see why we chose this place um, for this stay a year ago because it was such a good deal and it was such an incredible apartment in a great building in a great neighborhood that we've been wanting to stay in and with incredible views. So make sure you check that out after we're done here. Uh, let's see. Brian and girls asking about using Airbnb, worried about being scammed. How do you mm. uh, determine that you are not being scammed on Airbnb? And we have a couple of ways to do that. And basically the way to not get scammed on Airbnb is to always stay with a super host. Mm -hmm. Basic rule. We almost never break that rule unless the person has tons and tons of good reviews and there's nothing else available. Because if you stay with a super host on Airbnb, they're going to do everything to bend over backwards to make it right for you. Because if they get enough bad reviews, they're going to lose that super host status. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very difficult to get. So they want to make sure that their guests are always happy mm -hmm. and that there aren't any problems because it's so hard to get that super host status. So that's definitely the first kind of cheat code to not being scammed on Airbnb is to get a super host. Yeah, uh, that's, that's what we always do. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, a hotel does come with housekeeping. We often deny the housekeeping, though. We don't... <laughs> We don't get it a lot. Uh, not, they don't do it every day anymore, it seems mm -hmm. like. A lot of places we've been to in the last probably year or so, they only, they'll tell you upon check-in. As a matter of fact, we stayed in multiple hotels when we were in Japan um, early, early this summer, uh, and several of those hotels you know, told us when we checked in, you have to put your card out in order for them to, you have to put a little, uh, tab on the so instead of do not disturb you have to put that you want your room made up or they skip it altogether whether you have do not disturb or not and then one of them said they only come on like the third day or something like that so it just depends so you don't get it every day now anyways um just like on cruises too they they don't do uh you know twice a day now they only do once a day um so yeah so a little bit about why we go back and forth between Airbnb and hotels though, it really depends on the country. And some countries are much more suited for Airbnbs and some countries are much more suited for hotels. So we're going to give you kind of a list of which ones are which and that's going to really determine what the best thing to do is. So like take for instance, we spent 
last year in Edmonton, Canada, and it was great to get an Airbnb because there was something available that was affordable, there was something better to do uh, than a hotel, and the hotels there would have been pretty pricey uh, mm. to do that for a whole month, just wouldn't have been the same experience. Now, for instance, the same thing holds true here in Thailand where we are, where you can get this amazing apartment, we have a great view, all this amazing stuff, the hotels wouldn't uh, even come close to it. But some countries like Japan, explain a little bit about how it is there. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, you, you may have heard or not about uh, the size of uh, places, residences in Japan. And honestly, um, the rentals that you can get there, Airbnb rentals, are not too far off in size from the hotel rooms. So you're better off uh, sometimes even getting a bigger space in a hotel room than in an Airbnb unit. And they have a lot of very um, you know strict rules and different things like that. So that's one of the things you have to pay attention to as well, especially if you're staying long-term like we do in a lot of these places. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, we would prefer to be able to cook on our own as well, to not have to always have to eat out or, you know, have some type of option like that. But um, yeah, I think it's better in Japan to do hotels than Airbnbs. Yeah, uh, Electric Carabella is saying he had a bad experience in Edmonton mm. with his uh, Airbnb. I wonder, were you with a super host when you did that? Uh, we've, we've had a couple of subpar experiences with Airbnb. They've always been uh, not with a super host. Every time we've mm -hmm. been at a super host, it's been fine. The two bad experiences have both been not with a super host, yeah. just to make that clear, right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. It was, uh, you know, we those were both in places where there were not really any, one of them was like a, a last minute booking. So unfortunately, the super hosts that we would normally um, rent from were not available. And basically the only, t the only place that fit our criteria for staying for a month uh, was not a super host. And, had pretty decent reviews for the most part um but yeah we we had a, an issue there it wasn't a huge deal but airbnb actually made it right for us then and so that was good um and then the other one same thing it was another uh kind of um, last minute booking and it was not a super host and again it was a problem and it was fine it, it ended up being fine at the end yeah. Uh, Jane, thanks for uh, clarifying that. I was wondering <laughs> if you worked for Chase or something. She was saying there was a, a issue with the credit card affiliate link, possibly. So I'll check that out. But, oh, okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll check that out. I I did check it a few days ago, but I'll check it again soon. Uh, a couple of the countries that we're doing. Uh, so he's saying yes, it was a super host. They were two hours late for the mm. check in. Wrapping oh, wow. up a dinner and clearing the invasive, they are uh, rationed toilet paper and supplies. Yeah. Mm. Usually stuff like that, like people will start to leave reviews and you'll be able to start to see, because they're going to do that to everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're not doing that just to you. Yeah. Uh, they're going to do that to a lot of people. And over time you'll see, we did have one kind of invasive one like that. <laughs> yeah. where, oh, we did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> where they, they were coming to bring us stuff, but they were like really just checking on what we were mm -hmm. doing yeah like we uh, had a pool guy that came to do the pool one particular day of the week but then the maid would come on a different day of the week so you had two people coming and then every time someone was coming the owner would come with them um, and then sometimes they would still come by it was like a little bit uh too much checking up on and it was literally just the two of us in this place and I thought, do we give off the we're party people vibe? Or <laughs> I don't know why they feel the need to continually check up on us. But uh, yeah, that was uh, not as fun. And I think they continued to do that because I saw their listing uh, like a few months later. I was going to grab the link to give it to somebody. And I saw the last couple reviews mm -hmm. were complaining about how many times they came to the house. So I was like, all right, so it wasn't just us giving off bad vibes. Apparently they do this to everybody. <laughs> yeah, Brown Eyed Girl has a good point here mm -hmm. uh, that she's saying, I thought a hotel with a concierge would be nice, 
to help me once I get there. And that's one of the reasons we're gonna try the hotel thing out. We're gonna let you know like halfway through this year because we're gonna attempt to get the top tier status with like all the hotel chains <laughs> in 2024. Because we have status with one hotel chain and when we our first night in Kuala Lumpur, we walked in and we were only Marriott Gold at the time. We're gonna try to be titanium in, in a few months here. But we were only Marriott Gold in Asia. And if you don't know, we're in Asia right now and status in Asia goes a lot further than America because in America, <clears throat> Think about if you get a credit card like the Hilton Aspire or even the IHG one that we have that, that that link is for, you get platinum status automatically. The thing is, everyone in America can, can get that, but in Asia, those cards don't exist. So not everyone here has automatic platinum status. So when you get uh, over there, get to Asia, and you show up with your gold status, which they wouldn't even acknowledge in America, uh, they treat you really, really well here. So <laughs> Ali had gold status. We showed up in Malaysia and it was amazing. Like mm -hmm. the best service we've ever had. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. The staff was like over the top and we weren't even the only people checking in right then. There were another couple people checking in. There was so many staff people around. Um, from the minute we stepped out of uh, our car that drove us there from the airport, they descended upon the car and started picking everything up. I mean, they didn't want us to carry anything. I was trying to carry my own purse and I had to practically pry it out of their hands. I said, I need the passports to check in. He said, oh, okay. Otherwise he was gonna take it and put it on the cart and he just stood there waiting for us to be done checking in so he could bring our bags up to the room. They upgraded us. Um, and they, you know, they just treated us so well. And we ended up eating at the restaurant there at the hotel as well. And the food was incredible. Again, the staff over the top uh, treated us really well. So it was really a, a nice experience. You know, when you're traveling, um, whether it's long term like us or you're just on vacation, either way, you want to be treated, you know, nicely by the staff of where you're staying. And it is really nice in these hotels when you walk in, you know, with, with a status of some sort and they uh, treat you really well. It's quite nice. Yeah, so we, <clears throat> the first one we're going to try to get is uh, IHG and we've already booked 40 nights. We're going to Vietnam and we got 40 nights in a row in one hotel, but the hotel came with that club access so basically with club access you get a club lounge where they give you breakfast afternoon drinks and snacks basically a free dinner free drinks and then concierge to help you all throughout your stay so we're going to have that for 40 nights and then once we complete that 40 nights with your four after you get 40 nights you get that for the rest of the year so basically we're going to have that on ihg for the whole year because when you go to these uh, places where hotels are cheaper, you can afford to just stay there as long as you need to to get the status. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do, right? So yeah. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, and we got a really great deal on that place, too, because we took advantage of the sale that they had uh, a, f a few weeks ago, about a month ago or so, a couple yeah. months ago. Uh, got a question about uh, investing in precious metals mm. here. We do not ever buy precious metals that you have to, like, take yourself mm. uh, that you hold on to a lot of people do but we don't because we don't have anywhere to put it or just it's too much mm -hmm. to have to keep track of while we're moving yeah. around um, makes it a little bit more challenging it's better to have yeah. as uh, little uh, stuff as possible that's worth money we have invested in gold stocks before like there's a couple of gold stock ETFs I, I think off the top of my head it's GLD but we don't have any right now. So uh, we don't have any precious metals. Uh, yeah, Brenna, girl, the credit card is great. Um, the Probably the best credit card we have is that IHG one because it's a $95 annual fee mm -hmm. and you get automatic platinum status. And that basically gets you free upgrades and all kinds of stuff. Now, again, if you're traveling just in the United States, you're probably not gonna get 
that many great upgrades because almost everybody in the United States is platinum. But if you're traveling overseas, we get upgraded almost every time. Seems Actually, like. yeah, I can't think of a time we didn't get upgraded. Um, yeah, I can't think of a time we didn't. And with that card too, you get 20% uh, off uh, the food on the property as well. If you're staying somewhere where they have like a restaurant, uh, we've used it actually several times in Bali recently, a couple, few months ago. I stayed there two separate individual nights on my way into town and on my way back out and was upgraded and was given 20% um, off on my meals and they brought a fresh fruit plate to my room, which was amazing because the fruit's amazing here. Um, so really nice to get that. Uh, retired 2019 is asking, is the IHG card better than the Hilton Surpass? Mm. It is for us just because the IHG points worldwide go mm -hmm. so much further than mm -hmm. the Hilton's. We find that um, it, you just can't get as much for your points for Hilton. Now in America, it's kind of more even, but we don't usually use our points over there. We just have a really hard time using Hilton points, uh, but we do like having the Hilton status. Uh, yeah, Brana girl, you do have to check. Uh, forgot that you're Canadian. There's probably a card for Canadians, but you do have to check and make sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sure. I know that there are a couple, and I can't think of what they are right out off. Uh, yeah, I can't think of what they are. I'll try to find out and yeah. see if I, I can yeah. uh, know. Uh, Elizabeth's asking what hotels are a part of IHG, so I do know this. I have looked up a lot. <laughs> I have booked so many IHG hotels. Uh, so here's the thing this week this is gonna be a video coming up in the next month probably <laughs> but this week we're buying 500,000 IHG points which sounds crazy but uh, it's not as crazy as it sounds <laughs> so right now they're doing a sale where if you buy whatever points you buy you get the same amount of points for free so we're gonna buy 250,000 points they're gonna give us 250,000 points for free and we are booking our entire three months in Japan, we're staying basically, mostly except for like two weeks in IHG. So that's gonna be, you know, 60, 70 nights in IHG. And they're averaging about 10,000 points a night. So that's pretty good, because that's only $50 a night, because they're a half a cent a point. Uh, so to do that, we're gonna need like 600,000 points. <laughs> so we had 200,000 and we're buying 500,000. That's gonna hopefully get us through the summer. <laughs> We've actually already booked the 200,000 that we had. We booked the 200,000. Uh, so IHG has uh, Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Suites, Holiday Inn Express. They also have Crown Plaza, which Crown Plaza in Asia is really, really good. They have a lot of club lounges. It's kind of a, thought of as an older brand in America. Uh, they also have Intercontinental, mm -hmm. which is Pretty nice, we mm -hmm. like the Intercontinental a lot. And then uh, going up from there, the ones that we don't really ever stay in because they're kind of super expensive, is the Regent and the Kimpton and the Hotel Indigo mm -hmm. and the Six Senses. Those are like crazy expensive. Uh, so yeah, we mostly stay in the holiday. We try to stay in the lowest price ones that have a club lounge because then you're getting a cheap price, but you're also getting food included, free and food, drinks. yeah, and drinks mm -hmm. and all your, all nice. your stuff. So yeah. to get those, basically the Crown Plaza, the Intercontinental, and the Holiday Inn and Suites, not the Express, are going to have those most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, Hilton Embassy Suites. We do like Hilton Embassy Suites mm -hmm. too. Yeah, those uh, are nice. We just they don't have those like really where we are very often. Yeah. Seattle, I love the one there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you know how long the deal is going on for the IHG points? Yeah, it's till December 30th. So you have... You have time, couple 27 weeks. 27 days weeks. to yeah. make a plan and see if you can... Yeah. You can uh, use those. We are definitely doing it. Because <laughs> the, if you don't know this, this is the other great thing about the IHG card, is that if you have the card, your fourth night is free. With, if you book with points. So automatically you're saving 
by booking with points if you have the card. So uh, what we found basically, if a, if a hotel room is like $100 a night, uh, it might be like usually 12,000, 14,000 points. Mm. But that's gonna mean that if you bought those points uh, during the sale, you're only paying 60 or $70 a night in points for a hundred dollar room so you're saving quite a bit that's yeah we're doing that over and over and over yeah yeah and we do have uh, we do have also a marriott card we also have a hilton card so we do have you know multiple of the brands which is and hyatt we have that one too um so that's why we're gonna try to get status higher status on all of them so us some a couple of them gave us the highest status already like on the ihg which was amazing the other ones we have to work up to the higher status yeah there is a uh there's a marriott card that gives you i think it's uh platinum which is just one below the titanium but it's a pretty expensive card it's like a 650 fifty dollar annual fee mm -hmm. and there's a hilton card that'll give you their highest which is diamond but it's like a 450 dollar fee so if you're going to stay in those a ton, it makes sense. But the IHG one is kind of a no-brainer because it's only a $95 fee. And every year you get a free night certificate. And you can use that on a hotel that's worth more than $95. So mm -hmm. basically, you're getting... The annual fee is paid for with the free night. You're getting a nice sign-in bonus. You're getting the fourth night free. If you travel and are going to use IHG at all, that's really... Mm -hmm. an incredible card yeah uh, we use that what are your favorite uh, domestic hotels I'm assuming in America uh, in the US? I don't know if you mean brand or actual hotels but we have quite a few yeah. hotels that we really like in America what are some of your favorites that we've stayed at um, some of our favorites well definitely we really enjoyed stay we've actually enjoyed several of the ones that we've stayed at in Seattle yeah. Uh, the Embassy Suites was one because it's directly across the street from King Street Station and we usually uh, ride Amtrak into Seattle. Actually, we always ride Amtrak <laughs> into Seattle. Who am I kidding? Um, I think we've only ever flown in there twice and we've been there probably like six times. Um, so that one is really great. We also stayed at the Hyatt Olive 8. That one's a, a really uh, amazing one. And then one that we don't, is not like related to a credit card. Um, we've also stayed at the Citizen M and that's actually a really good brand. We've stayed in, that was actually the first time we stayed at a Citizen M in the U.S. We've stayed at Citizen M, um, like in Paris and I'm trying to think what the other place was in Italy, maybe, um, but we really liked that one in Seattle. It was really nice. But probably our favorite is that Embassy Suites right across from King Street Station. We just can't always get a, a good deal there, so we don't yeah. always stay there. When we can't get a good deal, then we try one of the other uh, hotels, and we actually have done really well. We haven't stayed at a hotel in Seattle that we didn't like yet. No, and hopefully we won't. <laughs> hopefully that's just like a good thing. <laughs> yeah, we do like Seattle quite a bit though. Uh, so, talking about uh, another, we had a couple questions come in before the chat of people that were wanting to do hotels, but didn't really want to not have a kitchen. And so that's kind of a little bit tougher, mm -hmm. but there's a couple ways around that. You can book with brands that only have suites so that would be like candlewood suites or uh staybridge suites and sometimes there's some good ones of those overseas or you can just book a suite which is going to cost you more i think the easiest they were asking what's the easiest way to get a suite i think the easiest is with hyatt actually if you can find a hyatt you can yeah homewood suites if you can find a hyatt you can book their suites with points, and we actually did that in uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. where a lot of the Hyatts in Asia, they're 3,500 points for a night, and instead of booking the 3,500 points, we booked the two-room suite with a kitchen and club access, and it's basically double. So if it's 3,500 points, it's only 7,000 points per night to do that. Now, if you're staying at like a 20,000 point per night hotel, which is what a lot of them are in America, that suite is gonna be 40,000. 
but you can see like when you're in other parts of the world, the suite, it's only an extra 3,500 points for the suite. So hey, that's <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, I think really the reason we're going away from Airbnb for the most part for this 2024 is A, we want to see if we can do it. B, we really like the value and we were just kind of getting tired of Airbnb mm -hmm. and see the part of the world that we're in right now is really conducive to hotels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really that I think that's the big thing. Plus being able to in a lot of these places to um, not only get a really nice, uh, you know, tiered hotel for a good price, but like you mentioned, in order to, to be able to have access to the lounges, which give you, you know, your free breakfast plus, you know, afternoon tea and drinks and uh, food in the evening as well. I mean, that includes quite a lot. Most of it is set in buffet style, so you can choose your food, which is really nice. And the other thing about it too is, is a lot of these places, um, it's particularly overseas and it, it particularly in Asia, is you can use the, the food delivery apps too and hand pick your meals as well, which we tend to do a lot because it's so inexpensive. And if you haven't seen some of our uh, videos here on the channel talking about that, it really does make a huge difference. It's so much less than, you know, a lot of people think to themselves, oh, you know, spending, I don't want to order food because, you know, Uber is so expensive with all the fees and all this stuff. And a lot of these countries, you know, those services are, are uh, parts of those services are subsidized by the governments and it really brings the cost down to anyone who's using uh, those apps and those services in their country. It's incredibly helpful and very cost effective way to get food as well. Uh, what is the best term time of year to book hotels in order to get the best mm. price? And I, I think that booking ahead is what we've noticed is uh, the best thing to do. Like we booked last year for seven weeks in Japan. Actually, we booked five weeks in a hotel, I think, and I know four weeks in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And I, I always book them out like six months ahead of time. And then usually what I do, the hotels are almost always cancelable up until the day or three days before. And so I always go back and just see by chance if it's cheaper, because if it's cheaper, you could just rebook it and cancel the old one, which is kind of a nice thing. But what we've found recently is it is always 20 to 30 to 40% more like the week before we actually get there. So I'm never canceling them anymore. Mm -hmm. Whereas in years past, we would cancel them and rebook it at a cheaper rate. So. I think the best thing to do to book a hotel is book it as soon as you can because and book a book a uh, refundable rate like it's fully refundable we rarely ever book a rate that's non-refundable and a lot of hotels play that game where it's cheaper to book a non-refundable rate we just usually book a different hotel because we like to have the hotel be refundable because then if they do drop the price you can just book a second room and cancel the first room and you've got the lower lower fare. So uh, that's that's the flexibility that you have mm -hmm. over Airbnb too. You can always check that price, yeah. make sure you're not really overpaying. Yeah, and somebody asked about the Home 2 Suites by Hilton. We actually like that one very much. The last time we were in Chicago to see our son, we actually stayed at one because we were there for a week uh, we booked that one particularly because it had the little kitchen with it and it was so great. It even had a dishwasher in it, which was so nice. It was like a, a, a little studio apartment. Actually, it was very similar to our son's apartment. Uh, you know, it had everything you needed, a really nice bathroom, had the little kitchen there on the side. It had a curtain that separated the sleeping area from the living area. So like if you were up working on the computer or whatever, you wouldn't keep the person up in the bed. It was really quite nice. It was the perfect uh, setup for us for a week in Chicago without having to eat out all the time. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit too about booking Airbnb because we do tend to get really good deals and wanted, people always ask us, well, how did you find that Airbnb? How did you get that great deal? And 
I want to tell you how we do that because there is a little secret to it and it's something that most people don't do. So I'm going to tell you right now <laughs> how we end up like with this Airbnb right here. Uh, this one is amazing. And I think we paid a thousand dollars. It has its own private elevator. Uh, it has, we're on like the 30 something floor. 39th floor. We have a view of the entire city. If you haven't seen the, the video of this, uh, apartment tour it's the link is in the description you can watch it later but how we get these places like for instance we went to Italy and we stayed in an oceanfront three-story house for seven hundred dollars uh, with a rooftop balcony seven hundred dollars for the month and people and then like later on people are like oh let me look at that one and the, the price is much higher <laughs> And the, the reason is, is because you only need, there's always market inefficiencies in Airbnb. There are always, hotels do a pretty good job of knowing how much their hotel is worth. Airbnb hosts, on the other hand, a lot of them are new or they don't really know or they, you only need to find one where the price is lower than the market thinks it should be to book it. You don't need to find a bunch of them. So you're only looking for that one. And the way that we do it is that we don't lock ourselves into a certain place at a certain time. So a lot of people, most people, when they are planning a trip, they're saying, I want to go to Italy in July and I want to go to Milan. And then so they search Milan in July uh, for an Airbnb and they find that it's pretty expensive. What we do is we go to Airbnb and we put in the whole country of Italy, not just Milan, the whole country. And then we go to the time frame and we pick any month. So like any month on period and we pick January, February, March, April, May, June, July. So any month long stay within the whole country of Italy. And then we move the slider down to a thousand dollars or less. And it'll surprisingly come up with hundreds of them that you can get. And so we look through those and we find the best one. And so we found this place in Italy and it was $700 listed for $700 it was a super host so we booked it and <laughs> it was fabulous now the, the host really kind of told us she was like when we got there she was like I I she was like I booked this I wasn't sure that I was going to have anybody so I put this up there for a real cheap price and <laughs> uh you know I'm not really making a lot of money on this one so I'd appreciate it if you could really helped me out by, you know, not overusing electricity. We're like, fine, that's fine. <laughs> no we, problem. We said, we know that we're, we know this is under market we value. We knew it was a steal. <laughs> but, so we were, you know, very helpful with that and paying for the electricity too. So the thing is, we went back like a couple months after we left and looked at it. And now the price of that same property was $2,000 a month for the whole year. <laughs> and that happens to us a lot because when you're, flexible mm -hmm. and you're willing to look at a whole country and say I don't care where I go I just want it to be a good deal mm -hmm. you can find a good deal when you zero in on I need to be in this place at this day at this time that's when you are not gonna find a deal so the same thing happened we came home to the US and we we're like ah, let's get a condo somewhere and for like two thousand dollars we stayed in Rehoboth Beach it was October, so it was kind of off season, but uh, we never would have thought to search Rehoboth Beach. That just never would have <laughs> come up. But since our search was the entire United States, and then we uh, just put any, we, we had a range of months that time that we were going to be in the U.S., so we put like six months time frame, mm -hmm. and just then slid the slider down to anything less than $2,000, because it's more expensive in the U.S., and that one popped up and it was a guy that had just got the uh, the listing and we were some of the first people in it. And so, you know, we took a chance on that one. I don't think he was a super host, but it worked out. No, fine. not yet, but it was actually turned out really nice. The place was really nice. 
the neighbors were super <laughs> nice. They invited us to a football party. Um, and <laughs> I was like, you know, we don't actually live here, right? <laughs> but they were so nice. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it had a, a, a gym that we could walk to right there in the neighborhood. It was a nice big neighborhood that we could actually walk in, just like nice evening walks or, you know, jog or walk in the morning and then head over to the gym. Um, it had uh, tennis courts, pickleball courts, all kinds of stuff. It was really, an, uh, we would never have picked it just like if we, like knowing about it. It was amazing. It was a really fun stay. Yeah, we have a uh, question about the stay bridge here in uh, Bangkok. We have never stayed at the stay bridge. We don't usually do hotels at all in Bangkok mm -hmm. because the, these condos are just amazing. Some cities, the condos are crazy yeah. good and cheap and so we always stay in a condo here mm -hmm. uh so yeah i think that uh that's one of the thing is that you gotta know when and where to use an airbnb and make that a part of your strategy and over the years you just kind of we've kind of realized countries like thailand airbnbs are amazing um countries like Italy, you know, you can get a good Airbnb there for pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot cheaper than you can get a hotel mm -hmm. for. The hotel seems to be pretty high in a few places. Italy being one of them for sure. Yeah. Spain's and another one where they can be pretty high. Greece yeah. is another one where they can be pretty high. We had a really nice Airbnb. We stayed in Athens for a month uh, a few years back and had a really nice Airbnb there. Um, that was super fun and uh, it had a rooftop like uh, patio and it had a gorgeous 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 view of um, uh, the what do you call it the Parthenon so beautiful yeah. oh I missed this question about oh. Japan while I was talking oh. <laughs> uh, looks like they're gonna be in Japan January and March on our way to and from Thailand mm. what IHG hotels did you find for 10,000 points yeah there's a ton of them uh, Go on IHG's app, look in like Hiroshima, the Crown Plaza. That for in January, it's not in March, but in January it's 10,000 or less. Um, now that's assuming you have the credit card because if you have the credit card, it's 25% less than it would be. Uh, just off the top of my head, there's tons of hotels. Like we're staying in uh, Akita at the Crown Plaza. Uh, it's not going to be hotels in Tokyo, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Not in mm -hmm. Tokyo and probably not in Osaka. But if you look at the like secondary big cities like Hiroshima, Kanazawa, we're going to go to Kanazawa, mm -hmm. uh, try that out. And it, uh, Sapporo, there's definitely Holiday Inn in Sapporo, that'd be pretty cold. But uh, <laughs> Sendai, there's definitely a holiday in there that is pretty cheap, definitely less than 10000 mm -hmm. Yeah, actually in Tokyo we ended up using our free night certificates and got some really good redemptions there too. Yeah, Tokyo is so expensive is. that <laughs> we, we got the Marriott credit card and we got the 50,000 point free night certificates and you need that in <laughs> Tokyo because <laughs> we found a hotel that was like 54,000 points and you can add a couple points to it and it's $600 a night for the hotel we're going to stay in but we're, we're not paying it uh, we're using our free nights from the Marriott credit card so that's crazy <laughs> we would never be able to stay there we've stayed in Real budget hotels in Tokyo because <laughs> we don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, it's saying they stayed in the Myrtle Beach Oceanfront Studio, fifteen hundred dollars in January for the entire month. Loved it. Wow. We did the same thing uh, yeah. in twenty twenty one. We did. We did Christmas there. Christmas there, yeah. and it Myrtle Beach is uh, that's a good tip. Yeah. If you're looking for like the cheapest beachfront in the United States, Myrtle Beach in January. You can get real cheap uh, at an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Yeah, it was real nice right on the beach. It's great. A lot of things are closed, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the beach is there to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, so Yvette's asking, can you explain the $8 meal we had in Malaysia? <laughs> uh, when the... Oh, yeah, so the the bill said thirty nine eighty. That was in Ring It. Oh, so. oh, oh, um, oh, you saw the video. <clears throat> yeah, that was in <laughs> that was in Malaysian Ring It's and the exchange rate is about 
five to one, basically. So uh, five ringgits are worth one Malaysian or one U.S. dollar. So it was about eight dollars total for two meals from Chili's delivered. Mm -hmm. I had the boneless wings, and I I didn't say it in the video, but I counted the wings after the video. They gave me 20 boneless <laughs> wings. I was stunned. I ate out of it like three times. Oh, you didn't even finish it. There was so many wings packed into that little yeah. thing. And I as like, I said in that video, I didn't finish mine either. I basically just ate one taco, half of the beans. And I did, I did actually eat all of the onion rings. I shared some with you and then I ate the rest because yeah. those don't warm up well. But I saved the other shrimp taco and the other half of the beans and I had that for lunch the next day. So actually ate twice off of that meal. We both did. Yeah. So a couple people. So we also ate Pizza Hut. Uh, we both got our pizza, pizza, <laughs> side, and drink. $3 each delivered. $6 total on the delivery app. But a couple people told us. And then actually uh, her doctor gave us some insight too on why everything is so inexpensive in Malaysia. And there's a lot of subsidies from the government that so like basically gasoline if you buy a certain grade of gasoline like the you know they're just the regular one that everybody buys uh, a couple of commenters on the video told us that gas in malaysia is capped by the government at a dollar 61 a gallon mm. so that's incredible and then uh the your doctor told us that doctor's fees like just to go visit the doctor they're also capped by the government for the whole country. So if you go see a doctor at the fanciest hospital in Kuala Lumpur, which is the biggest city, which is basically what we did, you'll pay the same exact price as going to any doctor anywhere else in the country, like even in a rural area, because uh, the fees are all they're capped. capped. Mm -hmm. You can't, they can't pay you more. Uh, so yeah, everything is, really quite cheap because I was in the, the the car to the airport and we we got a van because we had all our bags with us. That's a 55 minute ride uh, from our Airbnb to the airport. And I put it in the, like the Uber like app, which is called Grab and it was $12. And I was like, that's at least two gallons of gas. How can they, how can they make any money driving us an hour and then they got to come back uh charging twelve dollars and so apparently the gas is only a dollar sixty one a gallon mm -hmm. still isn't a big profit margin <laughs> yeah it's kind of crazy but uh <laughs> yeah americans can go to malaysia whenever they want you get 90 days which is very generous mm -hmm. on a visa free you don't have to get a visa. You just get there. They stamp you. You get ninety. You can stay for ninety days mm -hmm. before you have to leave. And you can actually renew that as one time. I think is all before you do have to leave. <laughs> uh, Monica is asking for a reasonable hotel in Tokyo. That is like an oxymoron. <laughs> but we'll tell you where we stayed. Uh, let's see if I can remember the name. It was which one? The, the second one. The second the, one. Ichi. It was Ueno. I see. Ueno. I C I. Yeah. Search for U um, E N O oh, I'm to I C I. Oh, you know what? It's in it's uh, the hotel tour, and the name of it <laughs> um, is in the Travel Asia with Ali channel. I did a video. I did a tour of the hotel room on there, and I know that the name of the hotel. It's uh, it's it's got it's got a metro station name in it. It's like I C I. It's a long name. It says, oh yeah. But if, I think if you just search you After a couple days, I finally figured out how yeah. to say the name of that station, and now I don't remember what it is. But um, I think you'll find it with Ueno yeah, ICI. Yeah, Ueno ICI. You should find it, yeah. And it was, we only paid, we paid not that much. It was only like $70 a night. And it was a nice hotel, it and nice. it was really close. It was walking distance to Akihabara, um, and there was tons of stuff around there. So that was, and the metro stations were right there. So it was great. Uh, let's see, can you do a video on the various Uber apps, food apps for the Asian countries mm. you stayed in? Yeah, we can probably do that sometime soon, but I can tell you what they are. They're basically, Grab is the major one. G-R-A-B. G-R-A-B. It's a green app. That's almost every country has that. Uh, and then in a couple of countries like Indonesia, they use Gojek. 
G O J E K. Mm -hmm. That's really only in Indonesia, though. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of them use Food Panda. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one's. Those are the major ones, basically, for food and uh, rides. Uh, Deborah wants to know if we took advantage of any of Black Friday cruise deals yet. We, we haven't. We've, no. we've been looking. We're crazy. eyeballing some for our return to the U.S. We were thinking about doing a Trans Pacific, so we're eyeballing a couple of them, and we haven't really found a deal. Mm -mm. Um, we have a friend also who is an agent. Asked her as well. We haven't been able to find anything that we like. But that doesn't mean the deals are not there. Um, I did see that some of them are doing a reduced um, uh, deposit, and some of them were doing like 50% off like beverage package and Wi-Fi and things like that, specialty pa uh, dining packages. So uh, definitely check that part out too. I wanna say I saw that on Norwegian for sure, NCL, and maybe on Carnival as well, I think are the two that I saw that had that. That's pretty much all we've seen, but we haven't booked anything yet. We've kind of narrowed it down to three, though, because mm -hmm. we would rather cruise home than fly home because we don't really like flying for 24 hours. <laughs> and really, if you're cruising, you kind of get uh, you kind of get basically free transport home uh, because your your money is paying for your mm -hmm. accommodation and your food. So. There's one going from Japan to L.A. that we kind of like. There's one going from London to the East Coast. Another one going from Rome to the East Coast. So we're looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Grab is a publicly traded stock. Uh, it's like $3 a share, I think. <laughs> we looked at it. They don't make any money. They definitely don't make money. And I don't think that they will because they charge almost nothing. Yeah, I don't see how they <laughs> could they ever could make money. Having used that app for years now, I don't see how they could ever possibly make money. Yeah, I read an article where they were trying to figure out how to turn a profit. And I was like, <laughs> well, you're only charging $6 for me to deliver two meals to us. Like, how? I don't know how you're going to ever make a profit. Uh, but now the problem for Grab is that everyone is used to paying, like, nothing for delivery. Whereas in America, yep. we're used to paying, like, $40. <laughs> they, can't, they can't jack the price up like that. So they really, uh, let's see, Monica's saying, I really want to go to Malaysia. I travel by myself, and I'm mm. 70 years mm. old. Airbnb or hotel, which should I do? I also still work, so trying to time at all with a low budget. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, Malaysia is... Really, it's amazing. We'll talk about Kuala Lumpur. You can do either. We did, uh, I think, which channel is the, is the... Travel Asia with Ali. We have a condo tour and hotel tour as well, the ones we stayed at there. The condos in Malaysia are amazing. Probably some of the best. We stayed at the Star Residences on Airbnb, and it was like $1,500 a month. I think we had a two-bedroom. Mm-hmm. But that's like it was I, like a resort there were two yeah. there were two restaurants on the property two restaurants um two pools one rooftop on the 69th floor and one on like the sixth floor a gorgeous huge huge gym um which i unfortunately didn't get to use because of my surgery but it was beautiful i did get to see it at least and then uh, also a spa on site it's guarded um, down uh, in the entry level, key card access only to the elevator, super, super safe. It's a safe place. Um, I, I walk around all the time by myself there. Uh, the few times, the couple times we've been there, I've walked around by myself, no problems at all. People are super nice and helpful. If you're like, oh, I'm confused, I don't know where I'm going, you can ask somebody, they would help you. Uh, English is widely spoken, which is fantastic. Not saying that you wouldn't still try to learn, you know, a few key phrases as we always try to do, but that is kind of the leading um, language. As a matter of fact, most people will just kind of look at you and basically realize, oh, this person is probably American, so they'll just speak to you in English, um, anyways, just from the get go. So I would recommend it for sure. Yeah, nobody ever spoke to me in Malay. <laughs> <laughs> I did a, a couple times. The nurses in the hospital thought I was Malay. Um, but because I have basically the same skin color for, as a lot of them, I think. 
Um, and so they would start to talk to me in Malay, and I just kind of looked at them like, oh, I don't know. And they were like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> when they saw yeah. my chart, they were like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then they switched to English. <laughs> if you're staying there for a month, definitely get an Airbnb. If you're only going to be there for a week, maybe a hotel. There's, there's some pretty, mm -hmm. pretty inexpensive, pretty good quality hotels there. Uh, so it's a... It's a great place. It's a very underrated place to visit. It is an underrated place because there is a lot there and around there. And there are day trips you can also do from there. Um, plus other cities and, and beach places you can stay in as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's one of those ones where you really can't go, can't mm -hmm. go wrong. And I think we were looking at going back and staying in some hotels, some of the IHG hotels. But we're gonna end up somewhere else <laughs> uh, because we have. There's just too many places that we want to go, <laughs> but yeah, there's yeah. also a lot of places that we love. So you know, it's kind of hard to balance out going back to the places that you absolutely love. People ask us this all the time. Why do you keep going back to Thailand? I'm like. I'm going to keep coming back to Thailand until somebody stops me <laughs> because yeah. we love it here so much. But this will always be in the plan, always coming back to Thailand. But then there's still some other countries that we go back to often, uh, you know, like Indonesia. We've been to multiple times and now we're going back to Japan. We're going to add that into the rotation. So it makes it hard to make it everywhere. <laughs> uh, when paying for Airbnb or cruises, which card do you uh, use? We use the... Uh, Chase Sapphire Reserve. Almost always with the paying for travel because you, unless it's a hotel, if it's a hotel, we use the hotel that we're staying at card. But if it's an Airbnb or a cruise, we use the Chase Sapphire Reserve because you get three points for travel. And so that's pretty valuable because if you do a, you know, if you do a $1,500 uh, Airbnb or something, you're going to end up with 4,500 points, which is a free night and a half at Hyatt, which mm -hmm. you can transfer to from there. So yeah. that is what we do. Do you have a favorite international airline? International airline? Mm -hmm. You know, we tend to use AirAsia a lot um, yeah. when we're over here. Is so, your favorite though? Yeah, I like them quite yeah. a bit. I like that ANA. Airline? Oh yeah. Al Nippon, yeah. Al Nihon, yeah. yeah uh, like that's a, a really good one. A and A, actually, we had bought our ticket through United, but it was service through A and A, and the staff, and the flight, and everything was absolutely incredible. I would definitely book them on purpose next time. <laughs> yeah. How many times a year do you fly? As little as possible, but we do fly a lot. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. We try to do the trains a lot uh, and the cruises a lot, um, but we try to keep it to as few flights as possible. It just seems like it used to be super fun to fly, but now it's like such a hassle in the last probably 15, 10, 15 years, it has become more and more cumbersome to fly. Um, you know, for some of them for obvious reasons, some of them for unknown reasons, um, and some of them it's just, you know, whatever, but it's just become so much more complicated and just, and also, you know, the older you get, I think it's harder on your body too, especially when we're doing yes. these super long haul trips, uh, you know, you've got 14 hours in the air and then you know a six hour layover and then another six hour flight is it's pretty brutal on you if we can avoid it we try to avoid it as much as possible yeah so which uh, the answer to your question <laughs> is as little as possible yeah but <laughs> we probably fly like we have to fly from malaysia to here we do a lot of really short flights like mm -hmm, like an hour like we'll probably do flight. five short flights like every other month and then hopefully take a cruise home <laughs> because otherwise that's a really hard flight. <laughs> we're, uh, we're trying, we're just scheming, trying to get a good deal on a cruise home. But we don't fly in America almost ever. We just take trains. We take the train, yeah. yeah. Uh, or Canada, take the train in Canada. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, Margaritaville cruise, we, we had a friend do that. Oh yeah, a friend um, just did one recently. I keep forgetting, I'll have to ask her how she liked it. Yeah, uh, we, it is, 
It is one twenty in the morning here. I just realized we got to talking oh, so much. Yeah, uh, we got huh. carried away, you guys. <laughs> Any plans for South Central America? Uh, yeah, there's definitely plans. Mm -hmm. There's nothing yeah. concrete. We're, we've been talking about it, actually. We just brought it back into the radar. We have spent some time there, quite a bit of time there in the past. Um, so we've been talking about maybe bringing it back in towards the end of next year. But and we have spent quite a bit of time there. There are some videos actually on our Grinded Life travel uh, channel uh, from our time in South America. Thank you, Brown Eyed Girl. Great to uh, talk to you yeah. and everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad your uh, Bruins are still doing well. <laughs> Red Wings are still doing well too, though. I noticed that. <laughs> Uh, so that's good. Yeah, we're planning on hopefully going to South America and then maybe going to Antarctica. That's what we really want to do. I think if we can work it out, but it's it's kind of hard to yeah. figure that out. Yeah, we're still working on that that part of it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Allie's gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna go watch the lions <laughs> <laughs> till about four a.m. and then. <laughs> We'll see what happens. <clears throat> so, yeah, I want yeah I wanted to mention I've been watching the Vancouver Canucks a lot lately. I don't know why, but I am. <laughs> so, uh, thank you to everyone that has come on here. Appreciate you all. And uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the the comments in of the this chat. one. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. We're here for a while now, so we will be. Uh, on here next week again for sure. Where are your headbands from? <laughs> My headbands. People want to know. I, you know what's really funny is uh, I buy these when I'm here in Asia and they cost me about between 50 and 75 cents. Um, so I always have a bunch of different ones and they're so nice. They're handmade by the ladies um, in a lot of these countries. I think almost all the ones I've been wearing lately are all from the last time I was here in Thailand. So. <clears throat> That's where I got them. Night market. And a lot of <laughs> people are asking in the video where your shoes are from. Oh, they're oh, the sandals that I wear, they're Pumas. Yeah. Um, and I bought them, I think we both bought shoes that day. I think you got sneakers and I got the sandals. Yeah. And it was like, not Rack Room Shoes, but whatever the other one is. There's another store that's like Rack Room Shoes, but I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. But we got them there. Anyways. All right. Well, thank you guys. We'll see you again next, next week. week. So hopefully uh, Rob will check out that link. Um, so yep, check out I'll the check link it down at right IH. He'll check it right now. Um, and then we'll see you guys next week. Have a great day, night for us. Good <laughs> Bye. night. Bye.